So the research question that we were provided by the ministry was, uh, what are the barriers of facilitators in accessing diabetes care for South Asian and Black populations living in Ontario? And we decided to break this down into two components. So and uh, these two components, the first one uses quantitative uh, data methods, so looking at like the ICS data, uh, databases, and it measures diabetes access to care and outcomes across South Asian populations in Ontario. The second component will be using more qualitative data methods like interviews, et cetera, to explore the barriers and facilitators that are impacting diabetes care across Black populations in Ontario. So here I'm going to go into to a bit of a deep dive on the first component, so the quantitative uh, data relating to South Asian populations in, uh, in Ontario. And so the, the, the target population that we were looking at was South Asian populations that were included in the Ontario Diabetes Database. So in order to be in the Ontario Diabetes Database, these uh, patients needed to be covered by OHIP. They needed to have either type 1 or type 2 diabetes. So this did not include individuals with gestational diabetes. And uh, just to be included in, in the database in general, uh, individuals need to have either one hospital discharge related to diabetes or two physician service claims related to diabetes within the past two years. Now, this is all diabetes patients across Ontario. So in order to uh, you know, separate the South Asian individuals from these, we use uh, something called a surname algorithm, which was developed in 2010. And basically what this is, is this is a list of surnames that are uh, common among the South Asian population, but they are not common among other ethnic groups. And this has been found to have very high specificity, so over 90% specificity. But since it doesn't include those uh, surnames that are included among other ethnic groups, the sensitivity is lower. And our sources of data for this were administrative data through ICS, and I've listed the databases here. In general, these look at, uh, these help us to see healthcare utilization as well as hospital, um, hospital data, and also data on uh, medications use. And uh, we will be looking at five specific indicators, which you can see in the, in the blue rectangle on the right. For those of you who are familiar with the HSPN diabetes report, these are the similar indicators to what we use in that report. So we have the top three indicators, indicators one through three, are related to diabetes access to care and diabetes management. So we have the proportion of patients that are up to date on their HbA1c screening the proportion of patients that are up to date on their retinal screening, and the proportion of patients with diabetes over the age of 65 that have had statins dispensed within the past year. So indicators four and five, these are outcome indicators related to adverse outcomes for diabetes, and they look at hospitalization for long-term diabetes-related complications, and finally, the proportion of patients with diabetes that have poor glycemic control. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to look at data from, from across three years, so from 2019 to 2022, which is the, the most recent year of available data. And we're going to look at trends in the data and compare this among the South Asian subgroup to the Ontario average as a whole. So on this slide, we have the three indicators related to diabetes access and management. So on the left, we have HbA1c screening. In the middle, we have retinal screening. And on the right, we have the statins dispensed. So just uh, looking at the slide, you can see that the pattern, the changes in the data are similar among the South Asian subgroup compared to the Ontario as a whole. So for HbA1c screening on the left, we can see that in 2020, which is the blue, there was a significant drop in the in patients that have had that had HbA1c screening compared to the previous year. And in 2021, this recovered somewhat, but was not yet at the level that it was prior to the pandemic. Looking at retinal screening, we can see that again, both across South Asians and Ontario as a whole, in 2020, this dropped compared to the previous year, and this continued to drop in 2021 and 2022. And with statins on the right, we can see that this remained relatively stable across both the South Asian subgroup and Ontario as a whole. And on this slide, we have our two indicators related to adverse diabetes outcomes. So on the left, we have the proportion of patients that were uh, that had poor uh, glycemic control, so high HbA1c levels. And again, we can see similar patterns in the data. So the proportion of patients uh, dropped in 2020. However, this is due to missing data since the proportion of patients that had HbA1c screening also dropped. This recovered somewhat in 2021. And with hospitalization, we can see there was very little change in the data, a, a, a slight drop in 2020 compared to the previous year, but again, not a huge change here. So in the next part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each one of these five indicators across our five quintiles of material deprivation. We're going to compare this among the South Asian subgroup and Ontario as a whole. 
So this is based on the most recent year of data, so 2021-2022. The light green represents the Ontario average and the orange represents the South Asian subgroups. So th this is for HbA1c screening. So we want higher screening rates, so higher rates are more desirable. And as you can see here, across quintiles one through four, uh, the proportion of patients that had HbA1c screening was lower among South Asians compared to the Ontario population. When we look at the quintile five, which is the quintile with the greatest material deprivation, we can see that among this subgroup, South, South Asian population were more likely to have their HbA1c screened compared to the Ontario average. Now, looking for a just a gradient in socioeconomic status, so we would expect if there were inequities in the system, we would expect to see that screening rates were higher among Q1 and kept going lower as we go through Q5, but we don't really see an observable gradient here just based on this data. So this, uh, again, we're looking at all of the indicators in a similar way. So light green is Ontario. Higher, again, is more desirable. So we can see across quintiles one through four, the orange bar is lower. So South Asian subgroups were less likely to get their retinal screening done. And when we reach the most deprived quintile of the population, so Q5, we can see that we have similar rates of retinal screening among South Asians and also compared to the Ontario average. No socioeconomic status. So again, we would expect higher rates among Q1 if we had inequities in the system, but there seems to be, at least among South Asian subgroup, no discernible gradient that we can observe. So these are the proportion of patients over 65 with diabetes that had statins dispensed in the past year, and this helps in the prevention of uh, uh, diabetes complications such as uh, macrovascular, etc. So here, Again, higher is more desirable. And we can see surprisingly, so this is not similar to what we saw in the previous two slides, that among South Asians across all five quintiles of material deprivation, individuals were more likely to have statins dispensed compared to the Ontario average. And here uh, we see almost a, a reverse uh, socioeconomic status. So we have a uh, gradient here. So among qu quintile five patients, South Asians were more likely get, to get statins dispensed compared to the Q1, which is the least deprived quintile of the population. So now we're moving on to our two indicators related to diabetes outcomes, so adverse diabetes outcomes. So here, lower is more desirable. So we're looking at patients with poor glycemic control. So we're seeing across all five of our quintiles of material deprivation, South Asians were more likely to have poor glycemic control compared to the Ontario average. And here we do see a slight sort of breaking here as we see that um, as people become more deprived, as we move from Q1 towards Q5, people are more likely to have poor glycemic control. And related to hospitalization for long-term diabetes-related complications, again, lower rates are more desirable here. And we can see that, this is again surprising, so we can see that across Q1 to Q5, uh, South Asian populations, even though they were more likely to be in poor control, we are seeing lower rates of hospitalization across all four, five quintiles of material deprivation compared to the Ontario average. And we do see a slight um, socioeconomic status gradient here. So we can see that individuals who had the greatest material deprivation in Q5, they were more likely to be hospitalized for a complication compared to those who were less deprived. So we talked about all five of our indicators comparing South Asian averages to that of the Ontario population as a whole. On this slide, what we're going to do is we're going to look among South Asian subgroups, uh, separating them into immigrants and non-immigrants based on uh, data collected from the IRCC. So uh, non-immigrants also include people who immigrated prior to 1985, and those who fall into the category immigrants are listed in the bubble on the right. So the orange here is uh, South Asians who are immigrants, and the light green is non immigrant South Asians. And looking at the three on the left, so these were our three diabetes access indicators, we can see that immigrants were less likely to have their HbA1c screened, less likely to have their retinal, scre uh, uh, retinal screening, and also less likely to have statins dispensed. Looking at our two indicators on the right, these were our adverse outcomes outcome indicators. I don't know if you can see here, but um, immigrants were more likely to have high HbA1c levels. And again, here we see that hospitalization is it's very small, I know, but uh, hospitalizations were less common among immigrants compared to um, non-immigrants, which doesn't, it's a surprising finding, it doesn't align with the direction that we're seeing the rest of the data taken. So overall, what we saw was that access to screening services, this includes HbA1c screening, retinal screening, was lower across South Asian populations compared to the provincial average. However, the South Asian populations living in Ontario had higher rates of statins dispensed across all quintiles of material deprivation. 
And even though patients were more likely to be in poor control of diabetes across South Asian populations, we saw a surprising finding that was hospitalization rates as a result of long-term diabetes-related complications were lower than the provincial average. So I talked quite a bit about the first component of uh, our research, which was related to the South Asian populations. Now I'm just going to go like a couple of minutes about this second component, and this is ongoing. So this was it's going to explore racial barriers and facilitate this to accessing diabetes care in Ontario for Black populations. So we are in the stage of conducting interviews for this, and we are very interested to get this out there. We know that we have people from all across Ontario joining us today from different parts of the healthcare system. And so um, if you feel that this is relevant to your target population, if you have programs, you think people would be interested in this, we invite you to jot down the contact information listed on the slide. I will also uh, put it in the chat in a minute now and just reach out to us, we'd really appreciate it. So what we will be doing is we will be identifying challenges uh, that exist in accessing diabetes care for black populations in Ontario. We will be collecting data via one-on-one -on -one interviews. So this can be done based on uh, using telephone, Zoom or in person based on individual preference and interviews will last approximately 30 minutes. Anyone over the age of 18 who identifies as Black, has diabetes and lives in Ontario is, is eligible to participate and individuals will of course be compensated for their time with a gift card uh, for participating in the interview. Uh, thank you so much and we look forward to hearing from you. Mm -hmm.